The Durable Mike Malloy. If cats really do have nine lives, they haven't got anything on Michael Malloy. Not much is known about this man. He had no friends or family, and no one knew his exact age, just that he looked to be in his 60s, possibly 70s. All we know is that he was Irish, did the odd job, and preferred to be paid with alcohol. Oh, and in 1930s New York, he was unkillable. In July 1932, Tony Marino, Francis Pask, and Daniel Kreisberg came up with a plan in Marino's speakeasy to take out life insurance on Malloy, a regular at the speakeasy, and kill him to claim the money. This wasn't Marino's first time either, as he had pulled off a similar stunt on Mabel Carson when he got her to take out life insurance, name him as the beneficiary, then got her drunk and left her to freeze to death in her ice-soaked bed under an open window in winter. Some people just fire people or rethink their business plan to save their bars, but who knows? Maybe this was the done thing in the 1930s Bronx. The press would later dub these menaces as the Murder Trust, but there was one problem with their latest victim. Michael Malloy was clearly a drinking god. Tony Marino let Malloy drink as much as he wanted on an open-ended tab, much to the delight of Malloy, or anybody in that position really. They were trying to get him to drink himself to death. An Irishman. Okay. He left, saying he'd be back. And of course, he was within 24 hours. Hero. This happened for three days, and the murder trust were getting impatient. Daniel Kreisberg suggested switching the whiskey to shots of wood alcohol, which only takes 4% to cause blindness. And by 1929, 50,000 had died from ingesting it and these guys were giving this to Malloy straight. But Malloy kept taking the shots, thinking they were whiskey shots and asking for more. This again happened for several nights. One night, he passed out and the gang waited in anticipation, only for the labored breathing to become loud snores. Malloy woke a couple of hours later and asked for more. Again. Hero. Becoming desperate, the group tried doing what Marino had done to Mabel Carson. One night when Malloy had become unconscious, they dropped him off on a park bench, stripped off his shirt, and poured ice water on his body. But in the night, Malloy had made his way back to the speakeasy, complaining of a wee chill, so the attempted murderers decided to do what any sane person would do. They decided to run him over. The first two attempts, Malloy jumped out of the way. The third try, Malloy was hit and sent flying over the car before hitting the ground. Leaving him there, they all went back to the speakeasy. But this was the durable Mike Malloy. And so, of course, five days later, a broken Malloy stumbles back into the bar asking for another drink. Obviously, not remembering how he'd got run over, just one of those things people forget, right? Seven months of trying to kill Malloy finally paid off when the murder trust just poisoned him with carbon monoxide. Kind of a cop-out if you ask me. The murder trust were found out and convicted of first-degree murder and sent to the electric chair, where they were killed on the first try. At least some people can do the job properly. Every time you have a hangover and start acting like an idiot, just know that durable Mike Malloy is judging you hard. And we're done here. Please remember to give us a like and subscribe. Let us know in the comments if you have a topic you think we should do some research into and help us really annoy the writing team. The weirder, the better. Subscribe.